Welcome to Nova Now, your connection to what's happening in Northern Virginia. I'm your host, Jessica Carver. The James Monroe Museum first opened in 1927 and is located in historic downtown Fredericksburg. While the museum is home to the country's largest collection of artifacts related to our fifth president, it also hosts events. Here to tell us more about those events is Scott Harris. Welcome, Scott. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. So before we talk about the events, um, James Monroe, fifth president, what else, what else about Monroe is remarkable? What should we know? James Monroe had one of the great resumes of anyone who's ever been president of the United States. He served at the local and state levels and legislatures. He was governor of Virginia four times. He was a cabinet secretary, was a diplomat, and had two presidential terms that made him one of the most popular chief executives in his day uh, that uh, have ever served. So it was a remarkable career of public service forged in his uh, service in the Continental Army during the American Revolution, where he was wounded, and, and took those principles and, and let them guide his subsequent career. So he's a remarkable person, uh, seemingly present at every major event of his times, and fascinating to explore and, and, and educate people about. Wow. So uh, if people want to learn more about Monroe and they're coming to the museum, what can they expect to experience there? What they would experience is a, a collection of artifacts and images that span his life and career that include things from his youth, from his Revolutionary War service, um, clothing that uh, the Monroes wore uh, in their daily lives as well as for official functions like the coronation of Napoleon uh, that he and his wife were present uh, for. Uh, you see everyday household things like a little uh, ivory day planner, literally little slips of ivory that Mrs. Monroe had each day of the week on and she could write tasks and, and memos down. It's like the, the, the first Blackberry. Wow. Um, <laughs> have uh, furniture used in the White House that the Monroes had acquired and, and had to use because there was nothing there. They moved into a rebuilt White House after the War of 1812 and their furnishing of the building would sort of set the style that we understand the White House to have and we have pieces that were used for that. We have some of the first presidential china that was ever ordered, uh, the first set ordered by the Monroes. And you will also see um, a, a variety of um, items brought back from their diplomatic postings uh, from France and Great Britain and Spain, uh, and some of the everyday things that you know just would be used in the household. So it really tells a whole picture of their life and career. Wow. And Monroe had a big day in April that's coming up here. What can we uh, expect from the museum for that? That's right. Uh, April 28th, 1758 was his birthday. And so we will be celebrating the 257th uh, anniversary of his birth um, with a variety of programs we're going to be doing on um, April 25th, that Saturday. Uh, we have games, we have music, we have refreshments. We're also going to be premiering a, a recently acquired artifact that we're very happy about. We're not saying a lot about it yet, but it's sort of a birthday surprise for James Monroe. And that's at the museum uh, in our garden, uh, outdoor garden at the museum from 1 to 3 p.m. Uh, on Saturday, April 25th. Do we get a hint about the artifact? Or? Um, let's just say that there were a lot of paintings and portraits done of James Monroe in his life, and not all of them have always been accounted for, and maybe there's a new one that's <laughs> been found. Wow, that'll be exciting. Hypothetically and I, speaking. <laughs> of course, a great component for your event, I'm sure, will be the unveiling there. Um, so other than Monroe's birthday, there are lots of other events that you have at the museum throughout the year, ongoing and sort of one-off. Can you give us a little overview of some of those? Yeah, we do a, a number of different things in a number of different venues because the museum you know, can do, we can do so much there, but when we do larger things, we do things on the street there, uh, downtown Charlotte, uh, downtown Charles Street. Mm -hmm. uh, we also go up to the university campus. Being part of the University of Mary Washington gives us the chance to do sort of straightforward academic programs like our James Monroe Lecture that we've been doing for 27 years. We have also worked with Women's History Month, Black History Month, but then we do walking tours of Fredericksburg. We do programs for children like Major Monroe's History Camp. We did a pirate theme program last year. Uh, we'll have one on colonial uh, era music this year. So there are a few perennial favorites, but then we try to bring in some different things each year uh, to uh, keep the variety going. Yeah. So tell me, why is it important for us to learn about Monroe? What kind of made him important and why is it important for us to remember him? 
When you look at any person's life and career, you, you, you're looking at what they did to express the values that were important to them. And for Monroe, it was public service. It was devotion to what the American Revolution meant, what the founding of this nation meant. Mm -hmm. It wasn't always a perfect symmetry. He was a slave owner. He had to confront the issues of slavery both in his personal life and his government policy. And like Jefferson and others of his era, he didn't find what we would consider uh, the best solution to those things. He supported repatriation of freed slaves to Africa. And so the nation of Liberia was founded with Monrovia as its capital. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a, a dimension that we're looking more at. Um, policies on Indian removal. Um, and so we, we look at the whole career of this man, we look at the things he was involved in, and we try to relate some of those issues and values to present times to give people a, a sort of sense of perspective. And there are a lot of museums that are trying to do that today. They're, they're not just talking about facts and dates. How do you relate values and issues that have sort of a timeless quality to them? So it, it all sounds fascinating. And I, I'm just wondering if our viewers want to get more involved with the museum. Um, what are some ways that they can be involved? Well, they can visit. We'd certainly welcome that. Um, we, uh, we certainly welcome uh, folks' support through joining the Friends of the James Monroe Museum. About 25% of our budget does come from private sources. We are a state entity, the University of Mary Washington, but like other state entities, we've seen budget cuts and we can never be sure how that'll go year to year. All of our public programming, all of our artifact acquisitions are funded through private sources, so it's an extremely important part of, uh, of our support and, and a, a really vital way for people to be a part of us. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Scott. Thank you. If you want to learn more about the James Monroe Museum, make sure to visit jamesmonroemuseum.org. I'm Jessica Carver, and thanks for watching NOVA Now.